Welcome back for some more discussion of vector addition by components. Here's our first example for this video. We are going to be finding the sum of two vectors, vector A and vector B. And so the sum would be the addition of those two. And A has a magnitude of 30.7 with a standard angle, sub A, of 18.2 degrees. Vector B has a magnitude of 45.2 with a standard angle of 251.0 degrees. So here's the setup and if we form our parallelogram with these vectors, opposite sides of the parallelogram, okay, our resultant vector is, should then be here. If I could draw a straight line. Notice I'm slowly weaning you away from the colors uh, so that you can do it without. You can do these problems without the colors. So we make our chart full of our x components and our y components for each vector. Neither of the vectors that we are adding is on one of the axes, so this is not going to be a simple problem. But just apply the steps and it'll, it will fall into place. So the x component of vector a will be the magnitude of a, 30.7, times the cosine of the standard angle of a, which is 18.2 degrees. Likewise, the y component will work out to be 30.7 times the sine of 18.2 degrees. And for b, we find the components of vector b in the same way, magnitude times the cosine of the standard angle and magnitude times the sine of the standard angle. Do not drop any decimal points. All right, and then all we have to do is add these. You're going to add your x components first. When you do so, please just punch it all into the calculator, putting parentheses around this. Your calculator supplies one of them. You have to add the final parentheses. Add that final parentheses before you hit the addition sign. Then put in the next part. Then add the y components. And to find the magnitude of the resultant vector, we would take the square root of r sub x squared plus r sub y squared. At this point, rather than introducing rounding error by using approximate numbers like we have here and here, let's go ahead and grab what you already have in your calculator. If you did this with me in order as we went along, follow these next steps and you'll be able to pull down an exact answer and use it to calculate. Hit second function x for your square root. Your calculator gives you one parenthesis. parenthesis. You need a second one because you want your calculator to square everything you're about to enter. Now hit the up arrow three times, hit enter, and this will bring you down the x component of your r vector, your resultant vector, without any rounding. Please remember to insert this symbol. You say parentheses, I say parentheses. I don't know. Put it in there. Then hit caret two, and that will square that part of what you're working with. All right, I am running out of room again. Let's move this over a little bit. All right, the next thing we need to do is add. To make this short and quick, you're going to do a parenthesis here, a parenthesis here, a caret two, and close that parenthesis. That will close your square root, and you will have a value of 36.16072 something something something. But when we round to three significant digits, we get 36.2. Now let's find the standard angle. We can't go there yet. We do have to find the reference angle first. So theta reference equals the inverse tangent of our r sub y over r sub x. However, it is not just an inverse tangent. It is the inverse tangent 
of the absolute value of that ratio. Can we scroll up on our calculators to find the r sub y value and the r sub x value where we calculated them previously? Certainly, you just have to scroll up further to find those same values. And when you finish calculating with those values and you round, you should get 66.4 degrees. But this is still a reference angle. We have to find the proper standard angle. Okay, this is in quadrant four. Our reference angle, okay, remember, I haven't been drawing these reference angles. I should have been. Your reference angle is found between your vector and the x-axis. So you're going to either go up or down to the x-axis. You want to form part of a bow tie. So if the reference angle is that little angle, the actual standard angle would have to go all the way around here. So not quite all the way to 360 degrees. Therefore, our theta is less than 360 degrees. So our standard angle has to be 360 degrees minus 66.4 degrees. However, we need to be very careful here. We're not doing multiplication and division right now. And 360, in fact, 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees are considered to be exact measures, meaning that you don't count their digits when you are trying to figure out how many significant digits to express. What you do, however, is, this is easiest to see if we line them up this way, all right, one over the other. When you are adding and subtracting with significant digits, we use a different rule. We use the rule where you look at which number is most precise and which number is least precise. Well, in this case, 360 is already perfect. We don't use it to calculate the number of significant digits. Let's just perform the subtraction. We get 6, 3, 9, so 293.6. The most precise number is here, since the other one's perfect. So we have to express all the way to the tenths. Therefore, our answer here for that standard angle is 293.6 degrees. Our resultant vector is the vector r, such that the magnitude of r equals 36.2 and theta sub r, the standard angle is 293.6 degrees. And finally, let's look at an example in which there are three vectors to be added. Now you may pause this video at any time to analyze what I've written here, but basically I've gone ahead and drawn the vectors, drawn the chart, and shown you how to calculate the x and y components for each of those vectors. And when you add them all up, you should get a resultant vector. Let's call it r, and that's going to be approximately negative 58.9949 for an x component, and a positive y component of 32.17605 dot 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 dot. Okay? And at some point you're going to have to round those. However, if you use your calculator to go scroll up and grab the exact values, you can calculate the magnitude of r by doing this with the exact values. Okay? Squaring the x component adding it to the square of the y component, and taking the square root, you find the magnitude of the resultant vector. And at this point, you should have 67.19, etc., etc., etc. We are only going to keep three significant digits of this, so that will be equal to 67.2. We were given no units, so we need not report units. We do need to figure out the standard angle for the new vector. We start by finding the reference angle and taking the inverse tangent of 
r sub y over r sub x. It is an absolute value. Okay, we go up and grab those r sub y and r sub x values and make them both positive because we want the absolute values. And we should get 28.608 blah blah blah, which is equal to 29 degrees. We now have the resultant vector r such that the magnitude of r is equal to 67.2 and the standard angle of r is, whoa, we do not have the standard angle. We have the reference angle. Where is this angle? So we have to do a little bit of analysis here. Let's see what would happen if we added vector b to vector a. Okay, so either way we want to do this. We're going to get either tail to tip and then draw in this tail tail to tip, or think about it as the parallelogram as I drew it out there. We now have a resultant here that is the vector of a plus b. Okay. Then we need to take that vector and add it to vector c. So once again, I'm going to choose the parallelogram method, but basically I'm starting by doing tail to tip, see where the tail of my a plus b vector is touching the tip of c. And I can move c over this way. And then I get a final resultant vector that I will draw in purple. There's my final resultant vector. That is the vector a plus b plus c. That's my true resultant vector. And let's uh, get rid of some of this so we can just see the resultant vector. So now that that's cleaned up, where's the reference triangle? The answer is it's right here. Okay, and so our reference angle 29 degrees is there, and the standard angle will be here. So theta here equals 180 degrees minus theta reference, 29 degrees equals 151 degrees. So now we have finished finding our resultant vector of the sum of vectors a, b, and c. That concludes this series of videos on adding vectors by their components. I hope it was helpful.